Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be taking this tall boy set of solid pine drawers and restoring them, doing a lot of repairs and we're also going to be transforming this into something totally different than it currently is. This was given to me by a friend, it was neighbour was actually throwing it away. It took a lot of fixing before I could even start to do the transformation. But stay tuned and hopefully you'll enjoy the end product. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm David and I restore, restyle and refinish old and loved furniture. I use a variety of methods and techniques to bring this forgotten furniture back to life. Welcome to my channel. As I previously mentioned, there were a lot of repairs to do before I could even start doing the fun stuff with this set of drawers or dresser. I checked every single drawer and unfortunately, I think there was only one small drawer that didn't need any work. The runners were missing, you can see there, they'd actually snapped off. So this is a first for me, I'm actually building some new runners and also repairing a lot of the broken runners. The uh, You can see another runner that's broken, so that's another repair I'm going to have to do. Now, you can see it moving around there and that's because basically everything was loose, so everything, there was a lot of glue needed, a lot of disassembling, reassembling. However, the, the main cabinet of the drawers was in really good condition, it was dirty, but no major repairs to do there. As I mentioned, I've never replaced a runner on a drawer like this before, so as you can see, this is my thinking process took a little bit longer than this to determine what to do but what I decided was the only way to do it really would be to disassemble the drawer so I'm just heating up the glue and just gently knocking off the sides of the drawer pushing the dovetail joints out there unfortunately which you'll see in a second those dovetail joints were actually nailed in through the dovetail it looked like it was with a, a nail gun so it's not an antique piece of furniture by any stretch this it's been factory made, but as you can see there, it's left some of the tongue in the grooves, um, which we'll sort out later. And just removing those nails from there before I can start the uh, can start the repair process. I'm just using the other side, which is which is fine to give me an idea of the size of wood I need to cut to stick on and then it's over to my bandsaw to start the repair. Once the new piece of wood is cut to size, all you then need to do, or oh, this is what I did, I'm not saying this is exactly the right way, but it worked for me, is just put some glue on the new piece and just smear that across, probably better doing that with a brush or something, but then just clamp it together to the piece that you need to repair and just leave that to dry and come back to it later to carry on with the repair. As you can see there, this is another repair that needs to be done. This one's just split, so it doesn't need a, it doesn't need a new runner. So I've finally got my glue syringes uh, that I'd ordered a while back. So basically just fill your syringe, squeeze as much adhesive as you can into the joint, wipe the excess and clamp it and leave it to dry. <laughs> Thank you. 
there were so many repairs to this piece of furniture that I had to actually do it in stages. And the reason for that is because I just didn't have enough clamps. You can never have too many clamps. What I have just done is, once it's dry, the, the repair piece, I then just trim it to size, to the depth that I need, and then over to the bandsaw after I've traced the dovetail joints from the, the opposite side piece. Now I was fortunate, like I say, I've never done one of these repairs before, and I've certainly never cut a dovetail joint before, and it came out okay actually. So the next stage was to cut in the groove where the the draw bottom will slide in once it's reassembled so again use the other side of the drawers to get the right size and mark that up and then it's just out with the router One of the big changes was going to be to the draw fronts, so I needed a flat surface in order to do that. So all I'm doing here is removing the hardware and then it's on to remove the trim. Just gently prise that up, it's just nailed in, no glue, and yeah, it's uh, as easy as that.
What are you doing? Hmm? Who are you barking at? Who are you barking at? Hey? <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? She wants the washing line. Oh dear. Ready. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Ready. Go. You're all tangled up now, aren't you? Hey? The drawers had a lovely curved front to each uh, each side and I wanted to accentuate that with the top. I didn't want it overhanging, I didn't want that sort of uh, rebated finish on the top. I just wanted it to be clean aligned. So I'm moving the excess with a circular saw and then it's onto the router. Look at the state of you. Hey, eh? look at the state of you. Look at you. You daft dog. Look at your face. Look at your face. Oh, look at the state of you. Right, let's give you a brush now. I wanted to change the legs on this piece because they wouldn't fit it. These existing legs wouldn't fit in with the overall finished design. So I just needed to remove these. Again, these were these were nail gunned in. So I took those off. As you can see there, I filled in the holes with some cut down broomsticks and I'm just filling in some of the large holes at the bottom there. The existing finish was wax. So rather than going in with the sander, I scraped it off first prior to sanding. Go away. I've got to finish this. Because this is going to be an industrial theme, I didn't want to sand all the, the battle scars out of it, so it didn't get um, a massive sanding, it was just really a refresh. Once I'd finished the sanding, I just needed to remove all the sanding dust, firstly with my air gun, and then just wiping the whole lot over with white spirits, which also helped for any residual wax that may, may have been on the piece still. So, good tip to do this prior to wood stain. Using my favourite Morel's Walnut Stain on this piece, an alcohol-based stain, just simply wipe it on. Any excess that doesn't soak in, just, just wipe that off with a shop towel. I always think that the little details make a big difference, so I'm just painting in with some wood stain, the, the dovetail joints there, 
And what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a bit of a shadow line in the rebated section just to give that illusion that these are individual drawers. The next thing I'm doing here is I am using some furniture repair wax on one of the drawers. They, this one in particular had, uh, I don't know why, but it had quite a lot of holes in the top of the, uh, the drawer front. So I'm just filling that in with some melted wax, letting that dry. And then you just go back with a plastic scraper or some sort of old credit card and just scrape that flat. Um, once you've finished scraping that flat, you just need to buff it over then with a, a soft cloth. You'll have seen me use this product before to nourish the drawers. In this case, I'm doing the whole unit with it because it was really dry and this product would really help resolve that. I was going for an overall industrial design with this piece so I thought these legs fitted the bill quite well they're quite simple they raise the piece off the floor and I really like them so just let me know if you agree in the comments the initial plan with these pulls was just to paint them in satin black but I didn't like them once I'd done it so I decided to distress them a little bit. There's a little comparison coming up soon. So if you let me know in your comments which one you prefer, that would be really useful for future projects. Thanks very much for watching so far. And if you think I've earned it, please consider subscribing, clicking the like and pressing the notification bell for future videos. Thanks again for watching and thank you so much for your continued support. It really does mean a great deal and I really hope you like the finished piece.